So I have decomposed the, velo the rotation velocity and velocity dispersion of Burge and Lodesk component using the 3D spectroscopic data from the semi galaxy survey. Okay, so there are two ways to decompose Burge and Lodesk component using the 3D spectroscopic data. The first method is using the image slice at each wavelength by photometrically decomposing Burge and the disk component and repeating this over the wavelengths. Then we can construct the integrated spectrum of Burge and the disk component, and this integrated spectrum can be used to measure the age and the metallicity of them. However, the kinematic information has been removed from this method. Because I was more interested in the kinematic aspects of Burge and the disk component, and that's why I have used the second method using the spectrum from each special pixels of SEMI. So I have decomposed spectrum into Burge and Desk 1 using the full spectral feeding method. And finally, I have constructed this kind of a specially resolved rotation velocity and the velocity dispersion map for Burge and Desk components. So specifically, I have used the penalized pixel feeding method, which is a very popular method to extract the kinematics and the stellar population from galaxy spectra by a full spectral feeding method. So this is a schematic diagram showing how to decompose version of desk kinematics using the 3D the spectroscopic cubes. So here, black line is a line of the, an example of line of sight velocity distribution of a galaxy from galaxy spectra. If we believe this galaxy spectrum is a composition of two, that of two components, then we can express this black line as a flux weighted sum of two Gaussians. So here we can estimate the total shape of the line of sight velocity distribution of a galaxy using the 3D cubes from the semi-galaxy survey. And also we can estimate the weights of the two components from the photometric bulge disk decomposition. So using this information, PPXF simultaneously estimate the rotation velocity and the velocity dispersion of the two components. So finally, uh, I have uh, decomposed, I, I, I have succeeded in decomposing bridge on the desk component for 826 semi-galaxies. So this is the largest sample for spectroscopic bulge disk decomposition. And also this is the first sample including all types of galaxies from ellipticals to lay spiders. So this is an example. So the first column is showing the flux and the second column is showing the rotation velocity and the third column is showing the velocity dispersion. So using this specially resolved kinematic maps, I have measured the representative rotation velocity and the velocity dispersion using this formula. So for rotation velocity, I have used the velocity width, uh, which is a uh, velocity width between the top 10% and the bottom 10% of the velocity dis distribution within the effective radius. And also the velocity dispersion has been measured as the flux weighted um, average within the effective radius. So here uh, I have used the same aperture for measuring the kinematics of Burge and Desk and that was the uh, effective radius of galaxies as a whole. So using this, the kinematic values, first I have investigated the distribution of two components in V over sigma and the number all spin parameter. Both V over sigma and the number all spin parameter is showing which one is dominant between the, the random motion and the rotations. So in the first figure, top, top panel, uh, you can see that the bridge and the disk component is showing well, the well-separated distributions in the V over sigma uh, with very little overlap each other. 
And also in the bottom figure, this is the famous lambda r ellipticity plane uh, different to differentiate the slow rotators and the fast rotators. And as you can see, many uh, most of uh, the Berger component is lie below the, this, the demarcation line with, uh, for the slow rotating galaxies. And uh, so most of the, the disk component is showing the largely high values of lambda r, saying it's fast rotators. So this wizard is quantitatively saying that the galaxy, the galaxy bridges and the disk components are kinematically distinct. We also investigated the scan relations. A tool-efficient -like relation is a useful tool to show the mass scaling of rotation of late-type galaxies. So in the left panel, the eye denoted, uh, so the cyan color is showing the late-type galaxies whose Berge fraction is lower than 0.2, and they are following the fiduciary the tool-efficient -like relation. However, if we plot all types of galaxies into this Tully Fisher plane, then we can find a large scatter, especially for the early type galaxies. They are mostly scattered from the fiduciary Tully Fisher relation for late type galaxies toward the lower the velocity values. So in the right panel, so we decompose the birds and the disk rotations. And as you can see, the disk component from all morphological types is actually lie on the tool the fiduciary tool feature relation for late type galaxies. So I would like to say that the tool feature relation is not an exclusive relation for late type galaxies, but it's just the, mass, the general mass scaling for rotating component of all morphological types, especially at the even for the disk component of early type galaxies. So the same analysis has been done for the Faber-Jackson relation. Here I define, uh, so here the, the orange color is showing the elliptic galaxies, and I define the feature Faber-Jackson relation with them. So in the right panel, so as you can see, the Faber-Jackson relation applies to both bridge and the disk component with the same slope, so showing the parallel the relations, but with the different zero points. That is, the stellar mass also scales the velocity dispersion of two components for all morphological types, but with different zero points. Yes, we also investigated the residual trends in the Tully Fisher and the Faber Jackson relation. So here, the y axis is the residuals in the rotation velocity the, from the Faber Jackson the Tully Fisher relation, and the x axis is showing the galaxy properties. So let's focus on the result for the Berger fraction here. Galaxies show the residual trends in the tully fisher relation uh, with the, the Berger fraction. That is, the low B2T galaxies lie on the tully fisher relation by definition. However, high B2T galaxies uh, are scattered from the fiduciary tully fisher relation for late type galaxies. However, both Burge and the disk component have no trends with the, uh, in the residuals to the Burge fraction. And we found the same result for the Faber-Jackson relation. So here, galaxies show the residual trends in the Faber-Jackson relation. However, Burge and the disk component have no trend in the residuals with the, the Burge fraction or with any other the galaxy properties. Therefore, the combination of a Burge and the disk component generate the residual trends in the scale relations in both Faber-Jackson and the Tully Fisher relation. Yeah, this is the summary. So we have succeeded in decomposing Burge and the disk component for the using the spectral feeding method for 826 semi galaxies. And we quantitatively show that bridges and disks are kinematically distinct. And also our the Tully Fisher and the Faber-Jackson relations for two components uh, presents that the stellar mass scales both rotation velocity and the velocity dispersion of uh, all uh, of bridge and disk component in all morphological types. And I would like to emphasize the last one that so our finding is suggesting that the relative contribution of the both bridge and the disk component can explain the complex the kinematic aspects of galaxies. 
And this work has been accepted, uh, recently accepted to MNIS, and you can find uh, our paper from the archive. Thank you. Thank you, Shri, for that wonderful talk. Um, there's time for one question from the Q&A. Um, there's two questions. The other one I would request you to answer uh, via text. But the first one was from Claudia, and she asked, is there a correlation between the bulge lambda R and their surgic index? Yes, we do find that one. So we didn't explicitly include that figure in our paper, but we decomposed, uh, we the divided these galaxies into early and the late type galaxies and found that the late type galaxies tend to show the more higher values, uh, even for the Berger component, the lambda R value for the Berger component from late type galaxies tend to have the higher values than the that from early type galaxies. So definitely we find the slight, the, the correlation between the CERSIC index and the lambda R values. And you can probably find this from our paper. Yeah. All right, thank you Sri for answering those questions. Um, to everyone, please keep sending the questions through Q&A. We'll do our best to answer as many as we can live. Um, but we also do it through the chat.